the nearly half-century Cold War between the United States and Soviet Union produced many strange stories. But perhaps few are stranger than that of Duga, the enigmatic radar array entrenched in the forests of Ukraine. Even some 30 years after finally going silent, the structures remain an enigma, following more than a decade of incessant, mysterious radio interference. Conspiracy theories continue to swirl around this isolated installation, with its true purpose still being debated today. From July 1976 to December 1989, a strange noise could be heard on shortwave radios all around the globe. The signal was extremely powerful and was immediately noticed by both amateur and professional radio operators. Even commercial industries and devices in people's homes were affected by the sound. The noise was a repetitive tapping noise that many believed sounded like a woodpecker or a helicopter. Although it was heard around the world and despised by many, the actual source of the noise was not confirmed until after the Soviet Union had fallen. Even today, much of the information surrounding the system remains a mystery. The thing is that the whole world could hear this sound on the radio, and many people often didn't pay much attention to it. However, it wasn't until the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991 that the true origin of the noise was revealed. Although the origin of the sound has not been officially confirmed for many years, many have concluded that the noise came from the Russian Duga radar in Ukraine. In today's episode of World Affairs, let's explore the mysterious radar stations of the Soviet Union from the Cold War era and how these special radar stations operated. The Chernobyl Radar Duga, also known as the Russian Woodpecker, is a massive Soviet over-the-horizon radar system built during the Cold War. It is located near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine and was part of the Soviet missile defense early warning radar network. The primary purpose of the radar system was to detect and track incoming intercontinental ballistic missiles or ICBMs launched from the United States, giving the Soviet Union an early warning in the event of a nuclear attack. The antenna of the Duga was huge, 700 meters long and 150 meters high. Despite its size, the Soviets built two, one near the now-abandoned town of Chernobyl, which was called Duga-1, and another in Siberia, called Duga-2. The radars were protected by their own air defense systems to ensure their survival during a conflict. Yasulav Yemelianenko, the director of Chernobyl Tour, which organizes trips to Duga, stated that even those who are already familiar with Duga are still impressed by its immense scale. Yemelianenko said, tourists are overwhelmed by the colossal size of the radar station as well as its aesthetic appeal and modernity. No one would have expected it to be this large. The Chernobyl antenna was pointed north towards the United States, who they believed was the most likely to launch intercontinental ballistic missiles at them. Meanwhile, Duga-2 in Siberia guarded against missiles coming from the east. China and Japan were growing economies at the time, and their military capabilities were growing too, which was a cause for concern for the USSR. Duga-2 could also detect U.S. missiles coming from the Pacific Ocean. The sound heard on shortwave radios was a distinctive tapping noise, owning it the name Russian Woodpecker. Each side had a transmitter and receiver, located about 40 miles apart. As a conventional radar can only see as far as the horizon, the Duga radar circumvented this problem by bouncing its signal off the ionosphere, enabling it to see over the horizon. To do this, an enormously powerful transmitter is required. The Duga system was able to transmit at 10 megawatt of power. 
The goal of the system was to detect an attack within the first two or three minutes after a missile had been launched. The Soviet Union had been researching early warning radar systems for ballistic missile defense throughout the 1960s, but most of them were line-of-sight observation systems that were only useful for quick analysis and interception. There was no system capable of providing early warning within seconds or minutes after a missile launch, which would have allowed Defense Forces time to study the attack and plan countermeasures. At that time, the Soviet Union's early warning satellite network was not well developed. Developing an over-the-horizon radar station within the Soviet Union would address this issue, and research on this had begun in the late 1960s. The first experimental system, Duga, was constructed on the outskirts of Mykolaiv in Ukraine, successfully detecting missile launches from the Baikonur Cosmodrome at an altitude of 2,500 kilometers. The subsequent prototype, also built at the same location, was able to track launches from the Far East and submarines in the Pacific Ocean as the missiles flew towards Navaya Zemlya. Both radar systems were focused towards the east and had relatively low power. When the signals began in 1976, they were immediately heard around the world. The signal was so incredibly strong that it interfered with commercial aviation and shipping communications, civilian communications and even disrupted television broadcasts. This prompted thousands of complaints. As mentioned, no one knew the exact source of the sound, but experts quickly established that the sound must be an over-the-horizon radar system. During their operation, the radar stations also encountered some issues. Firstly, Duga-1 was oriented towards the north. As it passed over the North Pole, the signal faced unstable propagation conditions and interference from the ionospheric layer. In reality, the radar could only detect a large number of ballistic missiles being launched. If only one missile was launched, it would be difficult for the radar to detect it. Secondly, using a frequency range from 7 to 19 MHz, this system interfered with commercial aviation communications and radio broadcasting. All of these shortcomings led the Soviet military leadership to reassess the project and modernize it. Naturally, the Duga systems were an extremely closely guarded secret. After the transmissions began, both amateur radio enthusiasts and NATO were able to triangulate the position of the radars inside the Soviet Union. Many countries complained to the USSR about the shortwave tapping sound, but they denied its existence. Even Soviet map listed the location as a children's camp. Starting from 1983, the Russian woodpecker went silent and no longer disrupted the radio space. The final test was planned for 1986, but it was disrupted by the explosion at the Chernobyl power plant. The Chernobyl explosion on April 26, 1896 marked the beginning of the end for the Duga radar. The radar complex was closed due to radiation contamination and the workers in the vicinity were evacuated. Although radio experts understand that the Russian woodpecker was a type of over-the-horizon radar, many believe that this radar had the ability to control mines and manipulate the weather. In the context of increasing concerns about nuclear war at the time, some believed that its signals could alter human behavior and damage brain cells. After the fall of the Berlin War, the Soviet Union also ceased development of this radar system. When the Soviet Union collapsed, the radars were dismantled and turned into scrap. Only one station remains to this day, located 10 kilometers away from Chernobyl. In the 1990s, the most valuable parts were looted but the steel structure of this facility still exists in the north of Ukraine. Nuclear reactors continue to be an international concern, but the Russian woodpecker is largely forgotten. Accurate information about this system remains a mystery. Documents containing information about the Duga radar, 
and how it was used have long been destroyed. Today, the mystery of the Russian woodpecker has been unearthed, and the peculiar structure of the radar station still stands, corroded and quietly lying in Chernobyl.